How do I register the U.S. copyrights in my song or song? Hello and welcome. This is U.S. copyright attorney Eric Kelly. In this video, you'll see at least five different ways, at least five different approaches to seek U.S. copyright registration of the copyrights in your song. And you'll also see at least some of the factors that are important to understand and to consider so that you can choose the correct approach out of these five different options for seeking U.S. copyright registration of the copyrights in your song. Okay, let's get into this. Okay, so what you're seeing here is just a list, uh, basically a slide I prepared that lists out these five different approaches uh, for seeking U.S. copyright registration of your song or your music. So I'll just talk about each one of these briefly and then we'll get into some other issues regar regarding this particular topic. So number one, this is often called the single application or what the Copyright Office also sometimes just refers to this as one work by one author type of a copyright application. And in this single type of copyright application, this is only for a single song, so only for one song, not for a collective work. Additionally, there has to be only a single author. An author is basically the same idea as the creator of the music or the song. So a single author. Additionally, that single author has to be the same person that's also the owner. And in terms of U.S. copyright terminology, the owner is often called the claimant. And, and lastly, for to use this particular approach, the, the one single song cannot be what's known as a work made for hire. And currently, as of April 2023, the U.S. governmental filing fee, the U.S. Copyright Office governmental filing fee is only $45. Okay, so number two, this is a, a standard application, or what the Copyright Office calls their standard application. And for this particular instance here, we're just talking about this would only be for registering a single song. So somewhat similar to number one, the first approach above, except we don't have the restrictions that there be just a, a single author. Uh, the owner doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the author. The single song could also be a work made for hire or not. It could be either or. So that, that's number two, the standard application look and filing just a single song. And again, as of April 2023, the U.S. Copyright Office governmental filing fee for that type of application is $65. Okay, the third approach here, number three, is what the Copyright Office typically calls a group of published works. And you can file different kinds of published works within that, but we're, just, we're talking about songs or music. So for that particular approach, for number three here, a group of published works, this is generally be, often if you would have released an album, this would, this would probably be the route you want to go. And you may, for this particular approach, number three here, you can include up to 20 published songs. And again, the, the current U.S. governmental filing fee is $65 for approach number three. And again, for number three, these would be up to 20 published songs. So that's that's an important distinction to keep in mind for this. There are published songs. Okay, number four, this is what the Copyright Office calls a group of unpublished works. And for this particular approach, you could file up to 10 unpublished, unpublished songs. And the current U.S. Copyright Office governmental filing fee for approach number four for filing a group of unpublished works up to 10 unpublished songs is $85. And later on in this video, I'll, I'll go through the, what published means in the context of U.S. copyright law, because published does have a special meaning in U.S. copyright law that's different from the ordinary everyday English meaning of published, so it may not be what you're thinking. And then lastly here, number five, this is also another example of the standard application being used. So again, number two was a standard application. And in number two, you were just filing a single song. But here in number five, you're filing what's called a collective work using the standard application. And the collective work would be general, would be two or more songs. And currently the U.S. Copyright Office governmental filing fee is $65. Okay, so next we're gonna look at some factors to consider and understand. And these are these are factors that'll help you determine which of these five different uh, approaches would be the appropriate one to use for your particular situation. 
Okay, so the, the very first factor that you probably should be thinking about is how many authors are there for, for the particular song or songs that you want to register the copyrights in. And again, an author is the same idea as a creator for the particular song. So a next factor that you likely want to think about is how many owners are there, owners of the song or and or owners of the copyrights in the song or songs. Here's a, the next factor would be, are the owners the same as the authors or, or are they different? So keep in mind that the author and the owner, they're different roles and they can be, they, they could be the same person or they could be different. So you, now generally speaking, the author is always going, at least currently is always going to be a person, but the owner could be a business. So it could be, a, you know, an LLC, a corporation, partnership, what, what have you. So again, just re quick recap. So some of the factors we've touched on so far, how many, how many authors are there? How many owners are there? And are the owners the same as the authors or are they different? Okay, another factor you need to determine is whether or not is one or more of the songs a work made for hire. And the term work made for hire does have a special meaning um, according to US copyright law. And we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later. Another factor to consider here is, is how many songs are there? Is it just one song, two or more songs? And then once you know some of these factors, an, an additional factor that kind of flows from asking how many songs are there is whether or not the one or more songs are published or are they unpublished? That's another important consideration here because some of the copyright applications, the songs either have to be published or not published or it doesn't necessarily matter. It can be either or. Another factor that's important to consider is what type of file will you be uploading to basically document the music. Is it, is it a, a sound recording file or files, or is it written music files? Thinking about it ahead of time and understanding exactly what type of file you're gonna be up, uploading for the song or for the music, like as, as I mentioned, it, whether or not it's gonna be a sound recording file, like an audio file, or whether it's gonna be a written file of the music, like of the lyrics or of the notes, that'll help you determine once you've once you've picked the appropriate copyright registration application, you'll then get to a point in the application where you have to select the appropriate type of work, and you'll either be choosing sound recording if you're going to be uploading a sound recording file, or you'll be selecting a work of the performing arts if you're going to be uploading a written music file. Okay, next we're going to talk about the authors in a little bit more detail, just to go over some some points here that are important to consider. So number one. A song must have at least one author. And as we noted, an author is a creator of a song. And currently, as of, you know, April 2023, an author is currently always a person, always a human. Now, the, the law here is a little bit in flux, like there's some appeals going on regarding whether or not, you know, something can be copyrighted from, from uh, being generated by AI. In the future, the law may change to consider AI as authors, but for now, as of April 2023, an author is always a person, always a human. Now, another point to consider is with songs, with music, there are often different types or different kinds or different roles that an author may, may play with respect to the song or music. So for example, some of these roles, and this is not necessarily an exhaustive list, you could have a lyricist, you could have a songwriter, you could have a composer, you could have a performer of the music, you could have a sound engineer, you could have a producer. There, there could be obviously one or more musicians and a, you know, a musician could also act in any of those other roles we just mentioned, could, could, could act as a lyricist, songwriter, composer, performer, sound engineer, and or producer. Now, generally speaking, we often say that the lyricist, songwriter, and or composer those contribute to what's called the, the music itself, or in copyright terms, we would say they make contributions to the musical work or the musical composition. So they're the ones that are responsible for kind of establishing the melody, the rhythm, um, and or the harmony. And the melody, rhythm, and or harmony are basically generally gonna be expressed in some system of musical notation, like, like musical notes and or with or without lyrics. Whereas the performer, the sound engineer, and the producer, they generally all contribute to the sound recording. So the musical work or the musical composition is generally referred to as one 
type of copyright that music or a song can have, and a sound recording generally is the other type of copyright that a song or music can have. So again, just backing up here, with songs you really want to identify the different author roles again. So for any given piece of music or song, was there a lyricist, songwriter, composer, performer, sound engineer, and or producer, and or musician involved? And did they contribute to the musical composition and or did they contribute to the sound recording? And also keep in mind, it's extremely common for a single author, a single person to make contributions in one or more of, this, of these various rules. So you could have a singer songwriter that's basically acting as the lyricist, songwriter, composer, performer, sound engineer, and producer. That's not unusual. So if you're a solo artist and you're doing all of these things, that's perfectly fine. But you just want to keep that kind of keep those things in mind in the back of your head. Now, if you have if there's two or more authors, then the, this gets more complicated, and you need to really think about which author is contributing to what. Okay, because that can play into which type of uh, U.S. copyright registration application pathway you go down and what information you have to disclose to the Copyright Office. Okay, so what you're seeing now is a table that I prepared that basically looks at how the five different U.S. Reg copyright registration applications for songs interact with these factors that we had just looked at. So for example, over here on the left-hand column, this is where we, I've listed those five different U.S. copyright registration applications for songs. And then across the top here is where all the factors are, are listed. So for example, if you only had one song that you were looking to register, then you could see one of the first two U.S. copyright registration applications would probably be the way to go. Whereas in contrast, if you had two or more songs you were looking to register, you can see that those first two processes, U.S. copyright registration applications would not work. Instead, you'd have to look at one of the, the bottom three. Uh, or if you had two or more owners, you could see that the first U.S. copyright registration application, the single application, or what's sometimes called the one work by one author, U.S. copyright registration application would not work. Instead, you'd have to look to one of the other four U.S. copyright registration application processes or approaches if you had two or more owners. And if any of these songs or a portion of the songs were works made for hire, that would also eliminate the very first U.S. copyright registration application approach, the single approach. You wouldn't be able to, to do that if any of the songs or a portion of the songs were works made for hire. Whereas you, you could, if, the, if any of the songs were works made for hire, you'd have to look at one of the other four U.S. copyright registration application approaches. And then here, with respect to the songs being published, you could see if you had two or more songs that were published, then approach number four would not work. Whereas if you had two or more songs that were unpublished, then approach three would not work, but approach four would work. So when you're doing a copyright registration application, in general, if you're doing two or more songs, all the songs have to be published or all the songs have to be unpublished for that particular filing. So for a particular U.S. copyright registration application of two or more songs, you generally could not include in that filing published songs with unpublished songs. You can't mix the published songs with unpublished songs. All the songs in that particular filing, that U.S. copyright registration application filing, either all have to be published songs or all have to be unpublished songs. And recall that publication does have a unique meaning under U.S. copyright law that we will go over here shortly. So in, in any event, you know, in summary here, you can use this table to kind of see how which factors might be applicable to your situation might then trigger which of these five different U.S. copyright registration applications might be appropriate for you. And shortly here also, we will jump over to the U.S. copyright.gov website and we will look at, briefly look at, each one of these five different approaches at the Copyright Office's website. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what publication means according to U.S. copyright law. So the, the term publication is defined at this particular law, which is called Title 17 of the United States Code, Section 101. So Title 17 of the United States Code, Section 101, includes a whole bunch of terms um, that are defined according to U.S. copyright law. And publication is just one of those many different terms that it gets defined in that particular section of the law. And the law basically says, publication is the distribution of copies or phono records of a work to the public by sale or other transfer 
of ownership or by rental, lease, or lending. The offering to distribute copies or phone or records to a group of persons for purposes of further distribution, public performance, or public display constitutes publication. However, a public performance or display of a work does not of itself constitute publication. So what does all that mean? So, so for example, if you're just uploading your songs to your own like YouTube channel, that's generally not publication per US copyright law, at least not in and of itself. That would be basically a, a display, essentially. Whereas if you're uploading, uploading your songs onto a music streaming service with the intent for others to listen to that uploaded music, and perhaps that you'd be getting basically a royalty payment from that, from, the, from those listens, that could be considered publication under US copyright law. So publication, it may not mean what you think it is, but you, it is important that you distinguish whether or not your songs have been published or unpublished, because that can play into which of those five different US copyright registration application approaches is, is appropriate for you. Okay, next let's talk about what a work made for hire is. Now that term, work made for hire, is also defined at section or title 17 of the United States Code, section 101. So the same law that defines publication also defines a work made for hire. And there's two ways that a work, you know, some creative work could be, like, like a song, could be a work made for hire. Number one, a work prepared by an employee within the scope of her or his employment. So if you're an employee, like, you know, a W-2 employee, or you're earning, you know, your, an hourly wage or a salary, if your employer, you know, asks you to basically make a song or some kind of contribution to a song, that's going to be a work made for hire. And when a given creative work like a song is a work made for hire, then it's the employer that's deemed the author of that particular song. Okay, here's the other way that a work creative work could be a work made for hire. If the creative work is specially ordered or commissioned for use as a contribution, and then the law is going to list a bunch of different types of creative work. So if you made a contribution, if the work was ordered to be a contribution, so let's say a song or some kind of music was ordered to be a contribution to this following list of works, then that particular song um, likely is a work made for hire with some other caveats here. So a work, especially like a song, especially ordered or commissioned for use as a contribution to a collective work as part of a motion picture or other audio visual work as a translation, as a supplementary work, as a compilation, as an instructional text, as a test or like an exam, as answer material for a test or exam, or as an atlas. So if the song was specifically or specially ordered or commissioned for use as a contribution to any one of those types of creative works. And if the parties expressly agree in, in writing that's signed by them, that that work that's being created for that contribution shall be considered as a work made for hire, then that song that was commissioned as a contribution would be a work made for hire. Now, out of that list, most of those don't necessarily relate to why you would add a song to, but some of them could. So for example, a collective work could certainly be a collection of songs. So that could potentially be um, applicable here. Songs or music are often added to motion pictures or audiovisual work, so that could be important here. And also for a supplementary work, that could also be uh, relevant here. So for example, if you were ordering, let's say you're a content creator, you know, YouTuber, influencer, or something like that, and you were ordering some music or a song, you know, basically as background for your videos, or maybe for an intro or, or an outro, and you had someone else basically make that song or music for you, and you had the, you know, in in your written contract between the person who actually did the made the song, it, st it stated that the song or music was going to be a work made for hire, then that would likely fall into making a contribution to a supplementary work or making a comp contribution to an audiovisual work, and so that song would be treated as a work made for hire in, in that situation. And you, the person who did the order and who, who made the commission, not the actual person who created the song, should be deemed the author of that particular work. So it, it is important to understand whether or not any of the music or songs that you're dealing with are works for made for hire because some of the US copyright registration applications don't allow 
work to be a work made for hire, such as the single application, you know, which was um, application approach number one. For that particular approach, the song could not be a work made for hire. But for all the other approaches, it's fine if the songs are works made for hire. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what a collective work is, because approach number five was to use a standard application to file a collective work. And as I brief, briefly noted, a collective work could include two or more songs. So the general, the general definition is a collective work is a compilation which a number of contributions uh, constituting separate and independent works and themselves are assembled into a collective whole. So an, an album containing multiple sound recordings could be considered uh, an example of a collective work. So that's that's why we included the collect, this collective work approach as one of these five approaches. However, I'll go over the next point here, which I think is a, a good reason not to use the collective work approach because it could have consequences that are unfavorable for you down the road. So here, here's a potential problem. A collective work is considered a single work for the purposes of, of calculating statutory damages and there, therefore registering a collective work along with all its individual songs contained in it may have important conse consequences in a U.S. copyright infringement lawsuit. So when you register a number of individual songs as a part of a collective work, you may be entitled to, to seek only one award of statutory damages for the collective work as a whole rather than a separate award, a separate award of statutory damages for each individual song even if the defendant infringed all of those songs. So because of that, when you do have a group of songs that you're looking to register, I think approach number three or approach number four is probably the better way to go where you, and not try to register that group of songs as a, as a collective work. Because then you won't run into this limitation or you potentially would avoid this limitation where you can only get one award of statutory damages for the entire collective work as a whole. You'd rather be able to get an award for statutory damages for each song, each actual song that the defendant actually infringes. So for, for that for that reason, again, I, I think you're better off if, you have, if you're looking to register two or more songs that you want to stick with approach number three or approach number four, where approach number three would, would be applicable if the two or more songs had been previously published. And approach number four would be applicable if the two or more songs had all uh, not been published. They'd all been unpublished. Okay, next what you're seeing is a portion of the U.S. Copyright Office's uh, website. So copyright.gov is the United States Copyright Office, basically, uh, website. And after you log into your account, this is essentially the screen which you're going to see, the user interface, at least as of April 2023. And then, you know, over here on the left hand side these are this lists all those different uh, copyright registration application approaches so for example approach number one which was a single application or also called the register one work by one author you can see that's right here so that's number the number one approach we talked about the number two approach was the standard application using and filing one song with the standard application so that's right here and then approach number three you can see it right here, register certain groups of published works. And then approach number four, you can see right here, register a group of unpublished works. And then approach number five was back at this uh, standard application, but instead of registering just a single song, was doing the collective work. So we'll look at briefly, we'll click into each one of these five and look at them briefly here. Okay, so we've clicked into the one work by one author, which is approach number one, the single application. You can kind of, and then before you actually click on the start registration button, you can actually see what the el eligibility criteria, which I've already basically summarized for you. But again, this is for one song created by one individual. All the material contained within that song must have been created by that same one individual. And that same author, creator, one individual has to also be the owner. Okay. And lastly, the song cannot be a work made for hire. And then you can see they've also provided kind of a, a cursory definition of what a work made for hire is. So you, you can pause you know, the video here and actually take a look at all these eligibility criteria in more detail, but we've essentially already covered all of these. So next we'll look at approach number two, the standard application for one song. Okay, you can see we've clicked into the standard application. 
So again, you can pause the screen and look at these. And you'll notice that there's not a lot of eligibility criteria really listed here. Like there weren't those all those restrictions we saw with the approach number one. So here on approach number two, again, this is for one work, so one song. That's what we're talking about for approach number two. It doesn't really matter whether or not there's one or more authors or one or more owners or whether or not the work, the one song, was a work made for hire or not. Okay, so next we'll look at approach number three. Okay, so here's approach number three. This was a group of published songs, okay? So you can see up to 20 musical works published on the same album, up to 20 sound recordings published on the same album. So this would be an appropriate, um, you know, U.S. copyright registration application approach if you had 20 or less published songs. Okay, next we'll look at approach number four. Okay, so now we've clicked into approach number four, which is registering a group of unpublished songs. So you can, again, you can pause the screen here and look at all these eligibility criteria, but basically it says, for our purposes, all the works, so all the songs, so we're talking about songs in this video, all the songs must be unpublished. You may submit no more than 10 songs, so 10 or less unpublished songs, or basically between two and 10 unpublished songs would be how you, you would use this particular U.S. copyright registration application approach. Uh, point number three here just says that all the, all the works that you're submitting have to be the same type. So all between 10 and two works would have to be songs for our particular example. Now this one also says that point number four, all the works have to be created by the same author or same co-authors. And those authors or co-authors have to be uh, the owners basically. So this particular approach does have a little bit more restrictions aside from just that all the works have to be unpublished and they all have to be the same type. So all songs, and again, between 10 and two unpublished songs. So then we'll look at the last approach, number five. So here's a clicked into it for approach number five, which again is just a standard application. And you could use the standard application to uh, submit one collective work of two or more songs. So you can pause the screen here and take a look at this again. So we've looked at all five different approaches. Okay, once you've clicked the start registration button from basically any one of those five US copyright registration application approaches, you're gonna arrive at a screen that generally looks like something like this. This is in particular for the standard application. And then over here on the left, these are all the different like little sections that you'll have to complete as you work through the U.S. copyright registration application. But for pretty much all of these, the very first thing you have to think about is the type of work. So that's what we're going to just look at right here. We're going to look at the type of work and what that means in the context of songs or music. And we're not going to go through all these other different sections of the U.S. copyright registration application. So once you click on this type of work uh, drop down menu list, here you can see all the different options available to us. And for music or songs, there's really only two that, are, that make sense for us here. The first being a sound recording. So if you're planning to upload an audio file, basically of the performance of the, of the song, or, song or music, then you're going to click on a sound recording. Whereas if you're planning to upload the written music, like the notes or just the lyrics, then basically you'd be clicking on a work of the performing arts. So if we had clicked on sound recording because we're going to be uploading an audio file, for the type of work, we clicked on sound recording for the type of work. This is the screen you'll come to. And this gives some information just to make sure you're at the right place. So for example, if you are only registering a sound recording, this is the correct place. Or if you're registering both the written work and the sound recording, then this is also the appropriate place. However, if you were wanted to upload only the written music, then this would be the wrong selection for the type of work. So this is a screen you would come to if when you were selecting the type of work, you had selected a work of the performing arts. And again, you would be selecting a work of the performing arts only if you're going to be uploading just the written music and not uploading a sound recording. If you're just uploading the written music, then you would have selected for the type of work, a work of the performing arts. And this is basically the screen you would see. And again, you can read through this particular information. So you can pause the screen and look at this further if you, if you want. So to look at the U.S. copyright registration application fees from the government, when you're at the website copyright.gov, into their own internal search engine, you can just type fees and click enter, and then this particular page will come up. And then next, what you want to click on 
is the registration button here so we can look at what the registration filing fees are for these particular five different approaches. So here now you can see the US Copyright Office filing fees for any of these five different registration applications that we've talked about. And this is current as of April 2023. So for the first approach, the single approach, you can see that the filing fee is currently $45. Whereas for approach number two, the standard application, which and also approach number five to use a collective work, approach number two was one song, approach number five was a collective work, but either one was using a standard application. And you can see that the current filing fee is $65. Whereas to register approach number three was registering a group of published songs. So between basically two and 20 published songs, you can see that the filing fee is currently $65 for that approach. And then for approach number four, to register a group of between two and 10 unpublished, unpublished songs, you can see that the current filing fee is $85. So all in all, in all, at least in you know, my opinion, I think that the, the governmental, the U.S. Copyright Office filing fees are, are relatively affordable. And at least with respect to like a copyright or a trademark registration application or a patent application, the copyright registration application fees are generally much lower than those other, other uh, two, the trademark or the patent. Now, now, of course, if you're not comfortable going through the copyright registration application process on your own, because it can get <laughs> kind of complicated and nuanced, as we've seen throughout this video, you certainly might want to want to hire your own copyright attorney to help you with this process. And if you do that, obviously, you're going you're to be paying your attorney fee, your copyright attorney fee, and in addition, you'll be paying the, the governmental U.S. Copyright Office filing fee. Okay, let's wrap up this video. So, you know, me, I'm U.S. Copyright Attorney Eric, Eric Kelly. I'm not a, a copyright attorney for the Copyright Office. I'm, I'm a private copyright attorney, you know, that, and I do work with clients from all over the world and all over the United States. And as I've noted here, I do handle copyright matters because I'm a copyright attorney. However, I'm also a trademark attorney and a patent attorney. And trademarks are there to protect your brand or your branding, and patents are there to protect you know, new novel and non-obvious inventions, basically new and non-obvious products. And lastly, you can see my contact information here in case you want to reach out to me regarding any intellectual property matters. Thank you. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to help me reach others about intellectual property matters. And here's some of my suggested videos on other U.S. copyright issues. Thank you.